It's time. Let's go. My name's Graham and I host and produce this little show called Exploring Stamps. You see, I have this box of used and unused postage stamps from around the world. And every time I pull a stamp from the box, I seem to learn something new. I've actually learned quite a lot. So let's do another season. 20 stamps to be pulled at random. Mostly random. This is Philately, the exciting hobby of stamp collecting with a little added adventure. Now the reason why I'm here in Flushing Meadows Corona Park in Queens, New York is because for the first episode of the season, I pulled out this stamp. It's the first stamp of the season and it's from the United States as we can see in the top right corner with a face value of three US dollar cents. At the bottom of the stamp are the words New York World's Fair and the year 1939. The stamp is a deep purple color and it's a mint stamp that's never been used. Because of that we don't have any cancellation or postmark to examine. The image is really simple, it's just a couple of shapes, a circle and a long triangle which we'll investigate further. The size of the stamp is 25 by 40 millimeters and it was first issued back in April of 1939. So the New York World's Fair of 1939 happened here in Flushing Meadows Park in Queens just six miles out from Manhattan and it was a spectacular World's Fair for a number of reasons. World's Fairs are international exhibitions that showcase the achievements of participating nations and they had a reputation of introducing the world to new ideas and inventions that often left a lasting impression. Uh, the Eiffel Tower was built for the 1889 World's Fair in Paris. Uh, the World's Fair in Chicago in 1893 introduced the world to Ferris wheels. Well, this World's Fair in 1939 introduced the world to the future. The fair opened in April of 1939 for two six-month seasons ending in October of 1940. Countries around the world participated setting up elaborate exhibitions and over 44 million people attended. It coincided with the 150th anniversary of George Washington's inauguration. There was a 60-foot tall statue of Washington in his inaugural robes standing proudly in the park. The theme of the fair was the world of tomorrow, giving a look at what the future may hold. And one such futuristic invention that was introduced to everyone at the fair was the television set. Fairgoers were seeing television for the very first time at the fair. Gosh. FDR opened the fair with a speech and that speech was broadcast on several televisions throughout New York City. This was the first television broadcast of any president ever. There was even a television set here with a transparent back just so that people could see there was no trickery involved. Other futuristic inventions that were experienced for the first time here were the Viewmaster, air conditioning and nylon. It was an interesting time for a World's Fair to be looking at the future. The Great Depression that started 10 years earlier hadn't ended yet and trouble was brewing in Europe. Just five months after the fair's opening, World War II began with Germany's invasion of Poland. Other than the building behind me, there's very little left behind from the 1939 World's Fair. And that's because in 1940, once the fair closed, all the buildings and structures were dismantled and the materials were used for armaments in the World War. Now, that brings us to the image on the stamp and pretty much the symbol of the fair. Known as the Trilon and Perisphere, these all-white monumental structures could be seen from Manhattan. The Trilon Tower was over 700 feet tall, connected by a bridge to the 210 foot high Perisphere. Visitors would walk along the sky walkway into the Perisphere where they would look down on a large model of a futuristic city. It's the image on the stamp that was pulled and apparently the stamp was not too well liked when it was issued. It was seen as a poor design for a stamp with very crude artwork. The design was actually submitted by somebody associated with or working at the World's Fair. I kind of like the simple design, but if you think of the other stamps that were being issued around that time, they were stunning and beautiful works of art. So I can understand why something so simple with a couple shapes can raise a few eyebrows amongst the stamp enthusiasts. I found a few other stamps also featuring this symbol promoting the World's Fair. One from Ecuador, Iceland, and then this one from France that's featuring the Statue of Liberty with the Trilon and Perisphere in the background. 
The location of the Trilon and Perisphere was right here. Ah, meet the Unisphere that stands in its place. This Unisphere is also from a World's Fair and it's also featured on a stamp, actually a lot of stamps. So let's fast forward 25 years from 1939 to 1964. New York again hosts a World's Fair here on the same grounds in Queens. This one had an attendance of over 51 million people over the two six month seasons with the motto, peace through understanding. There was an emphasis on the space age that the world had recently entered and this fair also introduced some new technology to the people including a mainframe computer and telephone modems tens of years before people would actually have access to computers and the internet. There are a few structures still remaining from the 1964 fair including these observation towers. Three concrete towers in which the tallest one stands 226 feet high. They had elevators taking visitors to the observation platforms giving a spectacular view of the fair, Queens and Manhattan in the distance. Right next to the towers lies the Tent of Tomorrow, an open air ring that once held the world's largest suspension roof. And the symbol of it all, the Unisphere. A stainless steel globe standing 140 feet high and was dedicated to man's achievements on a shrinking globe in an expanding universe. Those three rings around the globe symbolize three important orbits. One being that of the first man in space, Yuri Gagarin, one for the first American to orbit, John Glenn, and another to represent the first communication satellite. The sphere is very symbolic for Queens and it's appeared in a number of TV shows and movies. The US Tennis Open actually takes place right behind the sphere and you'll often see it make frequent appearances during the TV coverage. Remember in 1997 when Will Smith in Men in Black realized that the observation towers were UFOs where the alien was going to make an escape from? Do those still work? Then the alien actually used one to try escape Earth. but then they shot it down and it crashed through the Unisphere. So let's get back to talking about stamps because the United States again issues a stamp to commemorate and promote the World's Fair. This time it's the 1964 5 cent World's Fair stamp and it's a favorite of mine. But let's see if we can go find the location where the image was taken. Alright, here we go. One, two, three. Uh, almost. Something's not right. Actually, a couple things are not right. The Unisphere is much closer and more imposing on the stamp than from where I'm standing. And the statue is facing the other way. It's not uncommon for artists to change up the orientation or make things bigger or smaller to better showcase the location, as was done in this case with the Unisphere being enlarged as well as the statue being rotated to face us. The statue is known as Rocket Thrower. It's a godlike man that is throwing a sphere into the stars. It makes a lot of sense that they rotated the statue, otherwise we'd have Rocket Throw's rear in the stamp. Now, I found a promotional postcard from the fair that must be the exact same image. It's from the same location and Rocket Thrower has been rotated as well. When I superimpose the stamp over the postcard, you can see that things line up perfectly, including the shading on the trees as well as the people. Now, there are several other global stamps that feature the Unisphere, from Afghanistan to Yemen. You'll find the symbol of the Unisphere is either part of the graphic or overprinted on the stamp. The first self-adhesive stamps from Sierra Leone featured the Unisphere and the World's Fair. Just take a look through your own collection. You might just find the Unisphere hiding on one of your stamps. 
It's just fascinating to know that this was a busy place for two different fairs filled with structures and exhibitions that people traveled all over to visit. Yet the only reminders we have that anything happened here are the few structures from the 1964 fair as well as that one building from the 1939 fair. We also have those two postage steps, both pointing to the exact same location. The one being the Trilon and Perisphere and the other being the Unisphere that's in its place. You know what else from the fair is still around and is meant to be around for another 5,000 years? Time capsules. During each World's Fair, a time capsule with artifacts of the time was buried 50 feet underground in this location. Even though the concept of time capsules existed long before the World's Fairs, this was the first time that the words time capsule were used to describe it. Which is pretty cool in my opinion. And they're not supposed to be dug up or opened for 5,000 years. Now, what's in each one of them? Well, in the 1939 one, there's cigarettes, lipstick, a light bulb, a Mickey Mouse watch, the writings of Albert Einstein, a Life magazine, and more. In the 1964 one, they have credit cards which were new at the time. A ballpoint pen, electric toothbrush, a Beatles record, of course, and a bikini. What disappoints me is they didn't put a postage stamp in either of them. They could have put the World's Fair postage stamp in them. It's a lost opportunity. More adventure awaits for season 3, so make sure you've subscribed and follow me on social media. I post additional content as well as clues for upcoming videos. Links to my social media accounts are in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.